Hey guys, so today we're going to be converting this uh, Mr. Heater Big Max 50,000 BTU gas heater from propane to natural gas. Uh, it was installed years ago with the propane service, just made it a little bit easier, but since then I've had gas run to it, or close to it anyway. We're going to finish the uh, the last bit of piping up to it today. Um, and then also going to be installing this kit, which essentially just changes the nozzles. So you go from propane to natural gas with this kit that you can get from Mr. Heater. I just got mine online. It's good for the 50 and 80,000 BTU heaters. So first thing we'll do is uh, get started with running the gas to the appliance, pressure testing everything, and then uh, getting into the actual conversion of the unit. Okay, we're just measuring up some pipe here for the outside. Uh, I pre-paint a lot of the pipe that's going to be on the outside. It just makes it easier for... Uh, finishing later on. Sometimes it's difficult to paint the pipe once it's close to the wall and around obstructions and things like that. So that there was just reaming out the inside of the pipe uh, so that you reestablish the proper inside diameter of the actual pipe itself. Uh, there's a special tool for reaming it but I didn't have it with me in the shop so this burr does the exact same job. So like it says at the beginning of this video, this is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, so you'll see that I'm skipping over a lot of the actual plumbing process here. I'm just giving you sort of the basics of how the gas is fed to this appliance in this particular case. When this is being done, it has to be done by a licensed gas fitter. 
uh, and everything has to be pressure tested. So bubble detector or, or liquid leak detector isn't sufficient. Um, so every part of the system has to be pressure tested and also isolated from the appliance because the appliance can't handle um, high test pressures. So in this case, we're testing the whole system to 80 PSI, which is a bit overkill, but uh, it's better to be safe that way. Okay, so here we're just removing the four bolts that hold the um, gas manifold on. And uh, once we remove those, we're going to tip the, the manifold back uh, and also loosen the um, union right there so you can tip the whole unit, including the valve and everything, backwards. And that allows us to access the three brass uh, nozzles. So as I said before, this one's propane, so it'll have a smaller nozzle orifice and then the new ones that we'll put in will be just slightly bigger and they're meant for natural gas and they come in that uh, that uh, conversion kit so here we're just removing the brass nozzles the propane nozzles and I believe it's a half inch socket that I'm using there When you're removing them, you just want to make sure that no dirt or anything is dropping into those holes just to prevent any future problems. Okay, so there's the first of the three nozzles going in, the new natural gas nozzles. Um, so I put a little bit of thread sealant on it. Um, it doesn't say to do that, I believe, in the manual, but the old ones did have thread sealant on them, so it doesn't hurt. Just a small amount, and uh, just make sure it's not obstructing any pathways, and you should be good to go. Okay, so this here is kind of the second part of the conversion process from propane to natural gas. So on the valve itself, what I'm doing is I'm removing this little cap here and underneath the cap is uh, basically an adjustment screw that is in there about three quarters of the depth of that tube and it's threaded all the way and it pushes down on a spring and essentially that screw controls your manifold pressure which is the gas pressure going into the manifold um, just before the flames. And so we're removing this one, uh, so we're removing this screw, so we're removing the cap screw, this screw, and then the spring that is uh, in here, which you'll see in a second. And in the conversion kit, which I may have forgot to mention, it actually comes with uh, a new spring, uh, a natural gas spring, an adjustment screw, and then a silver cap screw. Um, to replace these. So there's the old spring coming out and it comes in a little bag there and you can see the spring is red so we're going to drop that into the tube and just make sure it's uh, set in there all right nice and straight as best you can And then there's the new adjustment plug, screw, whatever you want to call it. And so in the Mr. Heater manual, conversion manual, it says to screw this in all the way till it stops and not like with a lot of force, just until it bottoms out. And then you back it off one and a half turns in the Honeywell um, valve manual that also comes with the conversion kit. It says to screw it down 11 turns. I just went with the uh, the Mr. Heater 
instructions, I screwed it down at the bottom and then I'm backing it off here, as you can see, one and a half turns. And you'll see when we adjust the pressure, when I did that, I ended up with a manifold pressure of around five or maybe 4.8 and the required specification for it is four. So it was actually really close by doing it that way. Okay, so here we're just uh, putting the manifold back and connecting the union. And the next step will be to test the gas manifold pressure. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, you don't want to put the cap on the adjustment screw just yet because you're going to need to obviously adjust the pressure. Okay, so what I'm doing here is using a hex allen key to remove the manifold pressure testing cap screw. Once I remove that, I'm going to put the end of my manometer into this hole and that'll measure the manifold pressure when the unit's running. So I'm just screwing the end of the tube in there. You just want to make sure it creates a good seal so you get an accurate reading. So turning the gas on and now I've got the burner fired up and as you can see I'm adjusting the little adjustment screw and looking at the manometer at the same time and I'm looking for four inches of water column which is the specified gas pressure for the manifold for this particular unit. So turning it counterclockwise decreases the manifold pressure. So after you've got the pressure adjusted, you're going to remove the manometer and cap that port with the hex screw and you're also going to put the silver screw back on like I'm doing here onto the valve. Okay, so everything's running well, nice and clean. Uh, so one little problem I ran into, which is probably just for me being in here and uh, moving things around, that is a pressure switch. and. That hose that comes off of it goes into the blower and what happens is when you turn the heat on, uh, the first thing that happens is that switch senses that the blower is on, so it's pulling out the, whatever exhaust gases might be in there. And if it doesn't uh, feel uh, like negative air pressure, it won't switch the switch on and it won't fire the burner because it thinks that this blower is off. Uh, so I checked the switch and the way you can check the switch is just by pulling the tube off of here and sucking on it just a little bit and you'll hear the switch clicking and Also, you want to put like uh, some test leads on it to see that even though it's clicking it is actually making a connection And in my case it was so what happened is uh, There was a little bit of soot in the little end of the, of the lower Outlet so I just stuck a paper clip in there and cleaned it all out Put the hose on and it worked fine. Thanks for watching.